Curtis, go ahead and start us off, please. Hey, coach, I'm just curious what the the mindset or the message is as you turn the page, you know, from the end of the regular season. Maybe you didn't finish, finish up the way you wanted to, but, you know, postseason play is, is kind of an entirely new set of opportunities. Yeah, I mean, I think as, you know, as as we look at that, uh, you know, obviously the, the the way that we ended, we, you know, we would like, you know, we we're so close at Alabama and, and uh, you know, you look at the, you know, you look at our schedule, Curtis, in league and, you know, the five teams that we played twice, four of them are top four seeds in the, in the SEC tournament and Bama being one and, and A&M two and Kentucky three and, and Missouri four. And, and so the, you know, it was, it was a difficult end of the season for sure. Um, four of our last six, you know, games were against teams that are uh, top 25 teams, but you're right. This is a, this is a second season for us. Um, you know, we should have excitement uh, going into uh, Nashville. Obviously, we lead today. And, and then, you know, when you look at our first opponent, um, you know, Auburn, and you only have one opponent right now until you're able to, uh, to advance if you're, if you're fortunate enough to do that. Um, you know, but we're, we're going to need uh, – you know, several things from, from different guys, uh, you know, defensively, um, you know, Debo picked up two quick fouls uh, in that Auburn game, one of them being a four point play to start the game. So we're going to need uh, Debo to stay out of, out of foul trouble. Um, that'll be one thing going into the game. Cause he, obviously he's so important to us from a defensive standpoint. And then, then when we look at uh, you know, experience in this tournament you know Devo's pretty important because he's the one guy that uh that has experience in this tournament and then Kamani's got a little as well so both those guys you know I think are going to have some importance in this postseason play yeah you mentioned Auburn I wanted to ask you about Broom you know he's a guy that leads them in in several statistical categories just what do you what do you need to see from your from your front court to to maybe come out ahead in that matchup yeah, well, first of all, Brooms, you know, in my opinion, an all-league type player. Um, he's a hard cover, and then you have to worry about their guards and their wing, you know, guys like Flanagan at the wing. So they got a lot of offensive weapons that that you try to game plan against. Um, you know, we need our front court to play better than, than what we've played of late. And so um, I've mentioned Kamani because Kamani brings something to, to, to our team as far as experience goes. And and obviously we know we have a young roster and we know that we have a lot of guys that this will be their first experience uh, in conference play. And, um, you know, how our front line plays out in this first game, uh, not really sure. You know, obviously uh, Kamani, the Mitchell twins, Graham, um, all those guys, you know, how, how we defend broom is still a work in progress. You know, we've, we had one practice yesterday um, where we looked at several different ways to guard both their upfront guys and then and then maybe trying to guard their backcourt a little bit differently as well. Bob? Hey, Eric, how you doing? Nice, Good, nice sweatshirt. <laughs> um, hey, uh, I wrote this down. When we talked to Kamara the other day, well, he said a couple of things. I'm, one I'm not going to say, but he said, March is when men come to play basketball. I was wondering, is that something you've talked about? What, what do you think about that? And kind of what does that mean to you in terms of, you know, resetting and postseason runs and all that kind of stuff like you guys have had the last couple of years? Yeah, I think that, um, you know, I think we were able to make runs, you know, the last, you know, two years and even, you know, quite frankly, even the, the year that we, the, that it was shut down for the pandemic, I think that, you know, I've talked about, you know, us winning that first game in the tournament and the confidence that Isaiah Joe and, you know, Mason in his heart thought we were going to win that tournament. And, you know, no one knows at all how that would play out, but that team was very confident as well um, at that, at this point of the season. So I think with this team is, you know, just again, with a lot of young guys, just getting them to understand that this is a new season, um, going to come down to probably one possession in many of these games. Um, <laughs> you're watching the games in the other 
conference tournaments that have played out. There's been some incredibly exciting games and um, Auburn's very well coached and they got a lot of veterans as I've looked at, at the experience on their roster. I mean, Flanagan, number 22 has played in these tournaments and, and Chris Moore has, and, and Jasper and, and green and, and Johnson. I mean, they got a lot of guys, Williams, who's a, who's a, a, an excellent score and rebounder at the power forward spot. So they have a lot of guys back uh, that were in this tournament last year. So, um, you know, we've got to understand from a preparation standpoint that, that Auburn does have more experience in, in this setting than we do. And you, you mentioned Flanagan. He's an, obviously an Arkansas kid, and he, he signed with Auburn before, you know, you were even in, you, you know, you were in Nevada when he did that. But I know before the last game, he talked about being, you know, motivated because Arkansas didn't offer him. Like I said, that was a previous staff. And I know you recruited more, but he talked about being motivated because Arkansas fans got mad at him when he signed with Auburn. I guess guys are always looking for stuff. Well, it, Flanagan in particular is a real veteran player. Well, what, what do you thought of his season? And then Chris Moore as well. And maybe the extra motivation Arkansas kids have to play the Razorbacks. Yeah. I, I mean, I think for sure, you know, with, with Flanagan, I mean, I, since I've been in the league, I, I think he's, uh, an incredible player. I think he's got potential to play at the next level because of his versatility. Um, he can, he can make threes, um, you know, and, and when he shoots, you know, jump shots, he's one of those players that can elevate over people. There's not a lot of players that, that, that have uh, the ability to, to rise up over you. Um, and has also, you know, got great dribble drive game as well. So, I mean, I think that, Flanagan is one of the best players in the league and Chris Moore is a, is a relentless offensive rebounder and plays really hard and is an excellent defender. Um, you know, and that, and this is a deep team. I mean, Auburn's a really, really deep team. They were in the top 20 uh, for a lot of the year. So uh, hard, hard game to play, you know, in, in, in your first game in, in a conference tournament. And, and, you know, free throws, uh, I guess I've asked you a lot about them lately, and there's only probably so much you can do. But, you know, that that game at Auburn, you guys lost by 13. You missed 13 free throws. I know you're probably not going to hit 30, go 32 for 32. That's not realistic. But um, that was maybe – that's the first time I kind of remember free throws, you know, coming into play, kind of rearing, rearing that ugly head. And it's been – you know, you've had some games you shot them great. And you've had, you know, recently it's it's been a struggle kind of. What, what are you seeing there? And it seemed like you all shot them better early in the year. Do you think guys are pressing or is it because, you know, the SEC games are tougher? Or what, what do you think has been going on? Because it's it's like four games in a row now. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I think uh, with youth and, and you know, inexperience, um, you know, in the SEC play, I think maybe that's that's affected our free throw shooting and affected – uh, some closing in close games, but now everybody's got a full college season, you know, under their belt and everybody on our roster, even, even the transfers um, have now played, you know, a full SEC. And and so now you go into uh, the conference tournament and you, and you got, you know, one game to focus on and um, you know, we'll continue to work on free throw shooting and, and, uh, you know, you want guys to step up to the line and have great confidence because a lot of free throw shooting is confidence and, and um, you know, blocking out, you know, anything other than you, the ball, and the rim. And so, uh, you know, we did some free throw shooting drills yesterday and we'll continue to do them today. Okay, I'm going to have a couple more, but I'll, I'll turn it back to Mike. Thank, thanks, Eric. Scotty. Yeah, Eric, on Saturday you mentioned – um Kentucky's DHO game bothered y'all I'm, I'm curious what what are the keys to defending those a bit more effectively you know I think physicality um you know understanding is the team trying to you know shoot threes behind them is the team trying to turn the corner um all all and that's a you know the pick and roll game the DHO game that's that's everybody's dilemma every night um it's usually you know Point of emphasis, one, pick and roll, two, DHO game, three, how are you playing post-defense, four, how are you dealing with screens, whether they're down screens, cross screens, or up screens. So those are kind of the four areas that that as a, as a staff and as a team, you've got to decide how you want to play different things. And just like in the pick and roll game, I mean, we'll, we'll go down, uh, go through a plan A, go through a plan B, and then we'll ask guys like Devo, 
um, who's involved in much of that action. How do you feel most comfortable guarding this particular player um, in this game? And then we'll ask our bigs the same thing. So I think that, um, you know, I, we've done, I mean, defensively, we've been a, a pretty good team most of the year. Um, you know, we've had some great defensive efforts and then we've had some other efforts like the Kentucky game. Maybe we're, we didn't defend as well as, as, as we need to, to win a game. And Ricky, the last couple of days has landed on the AP and the, the coach's second team. What, what have been your thoughts on the year he's had and, and what do you want to see from him, I guess, this postseason? Yeah, I mean, obviously third in the SEC in scoring and, and um, you know, he basically doubled up his scoring and his assist totals from last year. So, you know, you, you, you would say that, you know, um, you know, he transferred up maybe a little bit. Um, conference wise, but yet his stats doubled. Um, so we've relied on him a lot. Um, you know, he's, he's come off the bench for us of late. He started for us. Um, you know, we need him to play really, really well for us to play at our best because um, again, any, anytime you have a player that's the third leading scorer in, in, in the conference, that's a, that's a heavy load to carry every single night. So we're going to need, Ricky, now that we're in postseason play to uh, to have good games for us. What have you thought about maybe the the production that he's given you off the bench? I mean, he's I think until the Alabama game, he'd started every game and then he started a lot more and he'd been coming off the bench like what what did you thought of the way maybe the way he's adjusted there? I think his adjustment's been phenomenal. I mean, uh, Coach Ruta put uh, in the group thread that we have amongst our staff his uh, what he's done over the last five games is his production actually went up um, slightly in a lot of areas. Um, having said that, as we continue to just try to figure out who we're going to start uh, for Auburn, I mean, we could change the starting lineup. Um, we're still talking to the team about matchups and, but he's, his productivity, you know, surprisingly, um, and whether whether he started or not, I think he I think he played 35 minutes or whatever against Kentucky. So 35 minutes is is starter minutes. And and I think Ricky understands that whatever role we ask him, whether it's coming off the bench or whatever, he's he's been a heavy minute player and a heavy production minute guy for us. Bob, you got your follow up ready? Oh, yeah, always, always ready. Uh, Eric, looking at the box from the last game, Wendell Green had had uh, 19, I think. What, what do you think of him? And what, what about that game and just his season and the challenges he presents? Yeah, Green, I mean, you look at his stats at home. He's 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 been so productive. Uh, and then he's had big games on the road as well. I mean, he's a, he's a guy that can – they have several players that can bust out for 20-plus games, and those those guys in particular are, are you know, Broom – Williams, Flanagan, Green, and Johnson, those four players. There's not a lot of teams in, in any league that have four guys that can have 20 plus games. So uh, all four of those guys on their roster are all, all capable of, of 20 plus nights and, and Green, he's got deep range. He likes to take big shots with game on the line uh, and he can dribble drive as well. So uh, that's what makes him a tough cover. Squeeze one more in. Uh, and you're 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 one of those teams that have four guys, maybe more that could score twenty. But uh, um, you know, kind of following up on what we've been talking a little bit about the second season. I mean, how do you feel? Because you've obviously had a lot of tournament experience in the Mountain West and and now here in the SEC, and and even when you were an assistant. Um, so, so kind of what? How do you feel? You know about the team. You know, how do you feel about these guys going in? And just where do you think the confidence level is with you, the staff, the players, everybody? What well, I, I mean, hopefully I'm always confident and have great belief in the team. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm not taking any shots. I mean, you know, it's, 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 we, we, we need the team to feel confident. We need the team to believe that we can win. And I think that this team has that. I mean, I thought yesterday's practice was good. Um, I think they're looking forward to getting to, to Nashville and, and getting settled in and, uh, having an open shooting in the in the arena that we're going to play because tomorrow will be the only time we won't get into that arena on Thursday. So, um, I, I mean, I, I I'm I'm hopeful and, and think that this team is excited uh, to to go play um, again. But you know, we have a 
we have an opponent that's going to be excited too. And that's what makes these games so competitive. Um, I'm sure everybody on Auburn's excited as well. And that's, and that's the mentality that everybody should have. How many polos are you packing? <laughs> as, as, as many as, as many as their potential games could be. Okay. Do you pack or does Danielle pack for you? I, I packed, I asked her to fold the polos, but I had to do them myself today for whatever reason. Maybe we needed to win one of those last three for her to pack for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure you're doing Thanks, excellent. Thanks, Appreciate your time. Thanks, you guys.